So I'm gonna do a Google search. I'm gonna do a Google image search and I'm going to uh, do my tools because I want it to be as large as possible. And let's say I wanted to use this one or this one. This one's probably gonna have, yeah, some stock things. You know, for our projects, the purposes of our project, I don't mind if you grab an image like this and um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. And I'll show you what I mean when I can zoom in. I'm gonna grab this one and move it into Photoshop as well. All right. So let's just say, for example, I want to use a bowl of cereal, a real bowl of cereal, and I want to have, I want to cut it out, like cut out the area around it. I chose this because it's really difficult. It's white on a white background. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the background layer to a regular layer by double clicking and call it layer zero. <clears throat> and I know I've shown you guys this, shown you this before, but I just want to kind of, um, show you again because you might want to do this. So I've grabbed my um, uh, polygonal lasso tool and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the feathering. So I'm going to show you what zero feathering looks like. So if you look right there that's a pretty hard edge and if I give it 10 pixels of feathering It's a soft edge. So zero is, is too little and 10 is too much. So let's see what one pixel of feathering would look like. Um, that looks about like where I wanna be. So I'm gonna to go to my um, edit, undo clear. So I've got one picture of pixel of feathering. It depends on the resolution of your image. I chose a high resolution image. If you have a, an image that isn't really super high resolution, you may have to use like half a pixel of feathering or something like that. So um, what I'm gonna do now is just start tracing around. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I don't wanna waste your time, but I'm just gonna, well, I'll do it, but. And again, I'm using my mouse. I'm not using my Cintiq and my pin or, or anything like that. And you see that it does, it looks a little jagged, but that's okay because the feathering is gonna help. Now this is where it gets real dicey. I can't really see the edge of this bowl. So I have to use like my artist's eyes and kind of guesstimate where the, I can see where the thickness of the bowl is. And so I'm gonna kind of, kind of come around. Then I'm gonna hit this piece of cereal. Ooh, I think I'm, I'm too far down. So watch this. I'm going to go back directly over my line and click back here again and click back here and kind of come back up. And I might be a little off, but Okay, so now that I've got it, you know that if I hit delete, it'll get rid of the cereal bowl. So I don't want to do that. I want to go um, select inverse. And now if I invert it, I can delete all the background. The other thing that I want to do is now I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to deselect it by going command D and I'm going to crop it down because I don't need all that extra white space. And now I can go file, 
save as, and I can go to my desktop and I can call it uh, whatever. I'll save it as a PNG. By the way, that PNG will not work. It will not work unless it is an RGB color mode. So if you have to, you have to go image mode. If it's CMYK, which it shouldn't be, but it could be, it has to be RGB. Now I wanted to show you the other thing here when you, as you guys probably know, like when you take things from the internet from one, two, three royalty free stock, you're gonna see that. Um, I don't mind if you use one of these images, but if you're gonna use one of theirs, uh, you should probably you know, either grab your clone stamp tool and, uh, we, oh, actually we had that problem. So we're not gonna use that. We're going to use our, let's see, where is it? That's not it. No, let's go to, I'm gonna change my workspace. To photography. And I'm gonna go show my, well, I was gonna suggest that we use our healing brush um yeah it's there on your tool thing it's, yeah it looks like a band-aid yeah i know but we're um i can't find oh there it is sorry couldn't see it yeah there we go uh my healing brush or my toolbar went up to my second monitor so anyways <clears throat> you can We use the spot healing because, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because remember we had that issue with your, um, with the option key and clicking on the option key on your Chromebook. But that's pretty effective at getting rid of this stuff. So by using the spot healing brush, I don't have to hit the option key to, um, define an area. And it's doing a pretty good job. Normally I don't use it because I don't like the computer making decisions for me, but. So again, this is just if you're gonna use one of those royalty free things that, uh, you know, has the watermark on it. You can get rid of it pretty easily. Anyway, so that's that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go back to Illustrator and I'm gonna file place the cereal bowl that I worked on. And there it is. And you can see that it's nice and cut out because it's a PNG. And so let's just say I wanted it to be on the front and I wanted it to look something like this. Okay, now this is an, uh, a pretty important part of Illustrator. So if we want, uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm just gonna call it uh, color. And I'm gonna put that color layer under my nutrition label layer. And I'm gonna draw this. And I'm gonna to go to my, whoops, I'm gonna to go to my window swatches. And I'm just gonna, <clears throat> wow, that would look terrible. Let's see. 
I'm going to put that color under it. Okay, so I need to be on my color layer and put it there. So if this was going to be my background color or whatever, which it wouldn't be, but so I have the cereal bowl. I want to use this much of it and I need to crop it. So the way that I'm going to crop it without destroying the image in Illustrator is I'm going to grab my bowl or uh, grab my uh, rectangle box tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle box of where I want the cereal bowl like this. And I'm going to change it to this. So you can see it. <clears throat> you got to make sure that the, the box is above. It, number one, it has to be on the same layer as the cereal bowl. So I'm going to lock this color layer. So there's my nutrition layer. You can see that on my nutrition layer, I have my bowl, my box, and the nutrition stuff. So this box that I just drew has to be above the cereal. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to select this box and this bowl. All right. And I know that I've showed you this before, but you know, if you don't do it every day, it's easy to forget. We're going to go object clipping mask make or command seven if you're on a um, on a Mac. And what that does is it gets rid of the line around the bowl and it crops the bowl to that shape. Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. And so now you can go in and you can lay in your, um, you know, your logo, which you have already. Um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to borrow somebody's design if you don't mind. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to go to your serial logos. And I think, uh, oh, that's right. You know what? Hold on, give me two seconds here. I'm just gonna, this will make more sense. Okay, so we had um, Jacob, I'm just going to borrow your logo. And I'm going to come here to my layers. Which popped up somewhere up here. Double click this, get rid of the white background. And I'm going to copy this. Come back here. You normally shouldn't just copy and paste, you should file place. But, you know, then you can start placing your logos in. And of course, Think of all the places that you're going to have to place that logo.
So you see what I'm saying? You know, you got to kind of place all those things in there and then get, you know, the rest of it until it, until it looks right. You know, it could wind up looking like that, you know, whatever your background is, however you decide to do it. It probably wouldn't look like that, but you get the idea. <laughs> 